Okay, now to the final update on our global market wrap. Sharp sell-off in European markets as well, with the French CAC, the German DAX and the British FTSE all closing with cuts of over 1.5%. The European Commission's economic sentiment indicator, which aggregates business and consumer confidence surveys, fell to its lowest point since November 2020. Okay, all right, that's the global market action, but how will these overnight queues impact our own markets? We have a research team joining in with, to tell you just that. There will be a lot of stocks that will be in focus as well, and there is, of course, action from the FNO space as well, and looks like it could be a start in the red today. Uh, so let's go across to my colleague Vivek, who's joining in with all the market queues that we need to watch out for in today's trading session. Hey, Vivek, good morning. Well, good morning. A very important trading session is the start of the the fresh series as far as the FNO contracts are concerned and we are looking at a very weak you know very soft handover as far as global markets are concerned uh, like you mentioned you know the sell-off actually resumed uh, in yesterday's trading session after the brief respite that global markets saw on Wednesday in fact Apple shares were the top laggard as the company actually has faced reports and saw multiple brokerage downgrades coming in on declining demand for the newer launches when you're talking about the Facebook parent you know they also went ahead and announced a hiring field due to which you know the shares fell not only that, if you're talking about the shares of Nike, they fell in the post uh, market hours trading session as the company, despite seeing higher revenues, actually said that bottom line is impacted by supply chain issues. So what uh, led to all of this? We are actually talking about the Dow, S&P 500 and Nasdaq all closing lower much, uh, you know, quite deep in the red in yesterday's trading session. When you're talking about the European markets, all the European markets ended lower by over one and a half percent each as, you know, the respite that you saw on Wednesday didn't uh, really uh, hold on and most of the gains that were seen as far as Wednesday's trading session was concerned were actually sold into. We're also talking about the bond yield, you know, the, if you're talking about the real, they rose once again reversing some of the gains that you saw on Wednesday. Oil markets uh, provided some brief respite, you know, oil prices went below $90 a barrel. Remember, OPEC plus uh, meat is scheduled next week and any production cuts up, uh, production cut news over there is something that will once again keep oil prices in focus. When you're talking about the Asian markets today, you know, they've all been a lot weaker on the back of the fact that uh, the handover globally has been quite weak. LGX Nifty is indicating a very soft opening. And yesterday, remember, you know, most of the Indian markets gave up most of the early gains they saw to end for the seventh state session in the red. Okay, all right, Vivek, thank you so much for all those cues. So important trading day ahead. Over to Surbi now, a lot of, lot of stocks in focus as well. Surbi. I have a few stocks on my radar today. The first one is Lupin, where the company gets a US FDA nod to manufacture Mega Background extended release tablets. This drug is to be manufactured at company's Nagpur facility, and the market size for this drug is $2.4 billion. Next is Coforge, where the company has been granted a US patent for its compliance, audit, and quality assurance platform. SRF has commissioned a plant to manufacture 300 metric tons per annum of P38 at its Dahej facility. The cost of this project was 58 crores. Rail Vikas Nigam Limited, the company has received an order worth 408 crores by NHAI. This is to construct a four-lane highway in Andhra Pradesh. Next is Hero Motor Corp. It plans to collaborate with Zero Motorcycles. This is a US-based manufacturer of premium uh, electric motorcycles and powertrains. The board has also approved an equity investment of $60 million. Okay, all right. So, uh, you know, one more update there in stocks and news today. Days after the board of Indus Towers warned Vodafone Idea of service closures over non-payment of dues, Vodafone Idea has said that it is in discussion with Indus Towers for softer payment terms. So this stock again will be in focus today, Vodafone Idea, because it has been under some pressure on the back of the news earlier. But uh, let's talk about FNO now. Nigel is joining it with all the cues. Hey, Nigel, good morning. Well, morning. Uh, another day, same story, right? The FIs, they continue to sell yesterday as well. They sold closure on 3,600 crores odd. And they're selling outweigh the DI buying. And in the last, uh, you know, seven trading sessions, they've sold closure on 20,000 crores odd. Closure around $3 billion odd. That's telling you the kind of intensity of the selling that we've seen. I'm looking at the positioning at the start of a new series. That's October. And the short positioning is at around 87%. Now, that's the highest that I've ever seen. You know, earlier in July this year, at the start of the series, you had short positions at around 85%. Now, that, uh, you know, moved even higher for the start of the October series. It's at around 87%. We should get that up for you on the screen. Yeah, that's the number that I'm uh, talking about. The only glimmer of hope is, you know, in that July series itself, we actually rallied. So, if you want some optimism, then maybe that's the optimistic data point that we're putting forth to you. 
But keep in mind, the 17,000 call, even in yesterday's trading session, added more than 25 lakh shares. The writers, they believe this level is going to hold out. And for them, that 17,100 will uh, be a bit of a stop loss. So 17,100, 17,150, the bears for now, with the kind of fall we have seen, they are saying we can defend that. What are the levels you're looking at then? The 200 DMA, extremely crucial. While the markets are falling, it was a bit of a support. Now, on the way up, it's going to be a bit of a resistance. So that's the crucial number, the 100 and the 200 DMA. A break beyond, uh, you know, uh, each, uh, e either of those levels will uh, give you an, a quick, you know, 100, 200 points even from uh, there onwards. So keep an eye out on the 100 and the 200 DMA. The bulls will be optimistic. They'll want to close, uh, you know, defend the 100 DMA and maybe end closer to around the 200 DMA. The SGX Nifty as well comes up for you on the screen. That's telling you, we'll like to see a bit of a pullback, maybe to the tune of around 40 to around 50 points. 100 DMA, crucial on the downside. Uh, you know, for a breakout, you'll have to conquer the 200 DMA odd mark. Back to you. Okay, Nigel, thank you so much for that. And you know, what is the same story again? Yeah, we both are wearing matching. the same color again. Inch pinch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. So on that note, Vivek, Surbi and Nigel, thank you so much for joining us. It's going to be an important trading day. So thank you for prepping us up for that. With that, we'll slip into a break now. The RBI will announce its policy decision later today. We'll tell you all you need to know after this short break. Stay tuned.